Hi, welcome to the Midweek Message. I am Stephanie Thorpe, and today I'm going to be recapping the Spain short-term missions trip. Uh, a team of 11 of us recently got back from Spain. Six of us also went on to Cander in Germany, and so I'm gonna attempt to just sum up all that God did during our couple of weeks there. This is the second year in a row that I've had the privilege of going to Spain and providing child programming for missionary kids while their parents are attending training. And I've just found myself falling more and more in love with missionary kids and serving them as best we can from here in Salem, Oregon. Uh, missionary kids have some unique needs being uh, third country kids and I just love that we get to go and be a small part of what missionary families are doing across the world. You're going to see a few pictures on the screen and you'll notice that there's not pictures of the kids faces. The families that we were working with work in closed countries that are dangerous and they're at risk of getting kicked out or possibly even imprisoned for the work they're doing. And so for that reason, you're gonna see more pictures of just the cities we were in and the lovely faces of our team and less of the kids, even though we would love to share their adorable faces with you. So historically for the kind of conferences we were at, the husbands would go or the dad and the mom would stay home with the kids while uh, the husbands attended the conference because there wasn't childcare. And this is problematic because it's really a partnership the moms and dads or husbands and wives are working together in all of the work that they're doing. And so they really need to be able to attend together. Um, it'd be almost like half of a basketball team practicing without the other half. And that really wouldn't be effective. And it's the same for this. So we go to do children's programming so that parents can go together, be equipped, be trained, um, encourage, rest up. Because like I said, they're in closed countries and it can be really isolating and challenging. I'm so thankful to be a part of a church that has the means to send us, as well as willing individuals who see the importance of trips like this one that are a little bit different than maybe your traditional missions trip. Our goal in Spain was just to love kids so well that parents could spend 100% of their time focused on the conference itself. It's a really long week. We have the kids for six days, eight hours a day. So that's 48 hours that these kids are spending with virtual strangers. And we're just trying to make it so safe and fun and comforting that they're excited to come back to us each day. On the Sunday before we left at our final team meeting, we all went around the table and shared our biggest fears and concerns for this trip so that we could just lift them up to the Lord and pray over them and not have them be a distraction while we were in Spain. And some of the fears um, were travel logistic, um, physical ailments and health issues that people were having, leaving our family and our children behind, some of us for the first time, and then the language barrier we were facing. So these kids come from multiple different countries, sending countries, and then are living in, in multiple different countries. So there was over uh, eight to 10 languages represented among the kids. Only two of them spoke English as a first language and the rest, it was either a second language or they spoke no English at all. And over the course of the trip, we saw God answer every single prayer beyond our expectation. So first, we got there on time. Our luggage was delayed slightly, but eventually all 24 pieces of our luggage arrived. And one thing that the team said over and over on our last day of the trip was that we were so thankful for the way that we were able to connect and communicate with kids despite language barriers. We were able to love them and bond with them and comfort them. So when we go on this trip, we take all of the materials with us for the week with the plan of leaving them there for the families. So every toy, craft, art supply, game, ball that we bring is left and offered to the families. So we're able to do that because of the generosity of you guys back home. Not only does it help our week go smoothly because we've got lots of options for the kids to meet their individual needs and interests, but it's also a huge blessing to the families. Most of them live in countries that they don't have access to many of the things we have here in Oregon. It's a huge blessing to the families that they get to take this stuff back home. And we saw that in two really cool ways this year that I wanna share with you. First, at the end of our trip, when we'd given the stuff away, one of our team members overheard two missionaries talking. One of them was a family who had just received a bunch of the supplies, and the other was a missionary who was attending the conference, but not with kids. The missionary without kids commented on how surprised they were that our American group was giving them all these things. Their view of Americans were that Christian Americans weren't very generous. Side note, most of the missionaries at this conference are not from America, but from other countries in Europe and South America. The missionary with children replied that not only had we given all this stuff to the families, but that a lot of us were also using our vacation time in order to go and serve them. So this was unexpected, but kind of cool that we were able to change the mind of missionaries in other parts of the world and maybe give them a more positive view of American Christians. The second really cool way that we saw God work through the supplies was when God laid it on the heart of one of our team members to bring a copy of a game for each family to take home. 
So we bring lots of games with us, but God specifically laid it on his heart to go out when he was back in Salem and buy a copy of the game Spot It for every single family. It's a small game that doesn't require a lot of language, so it was a good game to bring. When the game was handed to one particular family on the last day, they were almost in tears. Their daughter, who'd been in our group for the week, has some struggles, and a therapist had recommended that she get the game Spot It. And that wouldn't seem like a big deal, but in the country where they live, you can't purchase it, and you can't even get it mailed to you. They had literally prayed for God to bring them this game. And here we were handing it to them because God had laid it all in motion back in Oregon. So that was just really awesome for us to see God so clearly at work. One of my favorite parts of the trip is when the team gets to see the gratitude of the parents. I've seen it three times now, and it's overwhelming and humbling to see how extremely thankful parents are. To us, they're the ones doing the really hard work, making huge sacrifices to serve the Lord in closed and dangerous countries. But they truly feel like us coming for even a week or two to provide childcare is partnering with them in the work that they are doing. So it's really humbling to get to be a part of that. This year, instead of the entire team coming back together after the conference, half of us split off and went up to Kander in Germany, to Black Forest Academy, to visit another one of our missionaries, Elisa Johnson. This was the first time I had done a trip like this, where we didn't go in with a specific task in mind, but rather to visit and just encourage Elisa. My prayer for our time with Elisa is that somehow six complete strangers would be an encouragement and a blessing to her, and I believe that God answered that prayer. I went in thinking that we would be giving Elisa a chance to share all of the work she's been doing for the last several years, but instead what shone through was her love and passion for Black Forest Academy and for missionary kids. So it was really cool to be a part of a trip that still focused on missionary kids, but in a completely different capacity. We had three adults and three teenagers in our group that went to Black Forest, and you could see the wheels turning in some of our teens as new possibilities opened to them. It was a new side of missions that maybe they hadn't considered before, beyond church planting or church building, or even the conference that we had just done. Most of the teachers, dorm parents, and RAs at Black Forest Academy are supported missionaries, and they're working with over 350 missionary kids. And missionary kids have a unique set of needs and challenges that require attention. So it's awesome to see how many staff were committing their lives to working with missionary kids. I've seen my own passion for missionary kids and their unique needs growing so much over the last several years. And it was really cool to start seeing that in some of the teens from our team on that trip. I think maybe God has a plan for them in the future working abroad. The last thing that I saw God doing on this trip was just bonding the 11 of us. So many of us on our team hadn't really spent any time together before. We didn't hang out outside of this, but going with a common goal just caused us to bond in a really unique way. And there's something special about a group of 10 relative strangers coming together with a shared experience. It's refining and challenging, and it's also good and beautiful. And when we come back, I think there's a bond that makes our entire church better and stronger. So thank you, church, for praying, and thank you so much for supporting missions the way you do. Thank you for buying pulled pork from us and making wreaths with us and for writing checks. You're all part of the work that was done in Spain.